all the organizers uh, for giving me this chance to introduce uh, our recent uh, research work in the field of free body physics. And uh, so as you can see that I put, uh, use uh, just uh, a question as uh, the title for my talk. So to be honest, uh, I will say this problem is uh, under in investigation. So uh, we don't have a conclusion yet, but uh, I'm going to tell you today the understanding so far we've got on the, this problem. So I'd like to acknowledge my collaborators, uh, my graduate students, uh, student uh, Chao Gao at our institute and, uh, uh, and Dr. Jia Wang, who graduated from Boulder. And uh, his expertise is in the numerical calculation of a few body problem. So uh, they are the real hardworking forces on this project. So today I'm going to talk about uh, uh, this uh, newly uh, predicted uh, super FM of states. So what are these? Uh, so let's first compare them with our old friend, the FMOF states. So, so for FMOF states, we know that uh, uh, it happens for just the 3D. Uh, in 3D, if you have three bosons, and uh, they are uh, resonantly interacting with S-wave interaction, then for the three-body bound states whose uh, angular momentum is zero, then you find uh, uh, for the shallow ones, the binding energy will have uh, this uh, interesting form. And uh, so you can read off of this uh, uh, scaling S0, whose value is about uh, 1. And uh, one way to understand uh, the emergence of such kind of a uh, three-body bound state is that uh, so if you just imagine you do the calculation for this uh, three-body system, but you integrate out uh, the fast uh, varying variables and uh, say at the end uh, you leave, uh, you are left uh, over with uh, this uh, slow varying variable rho, which uh, uh, is actually the hyperspherical just uh, radius. I, I will talk about the hyper radius, uh, hyperspherical formula later. Then you know that uh, if the resulting just uh, Hamiltonian has this form, then uh, the shallow just uh, bound states and energy would uh, acquire this uh, predicted uh, interesting form for the uh, FM of states. And here I separate out uh, this uh, one quarter from the S not a square uh, because this uh, one quarter, if you do WKB analysis, you will see that uh, this one quarter will be cancelled by the uh, Langer correction. Okay, th th this is a uh, FMOF, and uh, though it's uh, firstly predicted for, say, 3D bosons, and then later extension has been made to the cases of unequal mass and uh, for fermions, and also for uh, cases, uh, uh, say, in mixed dimensions. Yeah. Now let's look about, uh, have a look at the, the super FMOF. So, Instead, now we consider three fermions, identical fermions. They are in 2D. And then we look at the, the states uh, whose angular momentum is equal to 1, because it, it's in 2D. So it's either just uh, rotating just uh, upwards or downwards. Just. But it's, uh, let's say that uh, the pairwise interaction now is tuned at a P wave resonance. Then it's uh, predicted by. Uh, Nishida and his uh, co-workers uh, in this uh, uh, paper that uh, the system can have uh, such kind of uh, three-body uh, bound states whose energy would have this uh, double exponential form. And their predictions were done by just uh, the calculation of a few theory and also they used a separable potential uh, just to calculate the T-matrix and calculate uh, the, the, the three-body bound state's energy. What is theta? Is that adjustable? Oh, uh, in, in this case, uh, theta is a three-body parameter, just uh, uh, in analogous to this uh, E0. Yeah. Then, if, if, 
Just imagine that you want to do the same thing for the FMOF, then you can, t uh, you, 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 if you, after several tries, then you find that if there is a, also a similar, just a, a slow variable Hamiltonian, which is of this form, the, the, the interesting part now that if the, this uh, effective attractive potential has a log square downstairs, then this uh, Hamiltonian will produce uh, uh, the low, just the shallow bound state, so whose energy, as predicted by the uh, field theory calculation and uh, the uh, separable potential calculation. So our uh, initial motivation is rather simple, just to try to understand uh, this prediction. So let's first uh, try to understand uh, this in the limit that, uh, let's say I have uh, three fermions, but uh, they, they are not identical. Two of them are identical, and uh, whose mass is much larger than the third one, which is a light, uh, just a particle. Then in this case, uh, then we expect that we can apply more Oppenheimer approximation, right? Then uh, the whole wave function, so we separate it into two factors, and uh, th this uh, phi so uh, care, uh, includes the motion of this uh, uh, light particle. And we imagine that uh, the light particle just uh, interact with uh, the two heavy ones individually through this uh, interatomic potential, V. And uh, so it's just a typical short range potential who is, just imagine it has a finite range R0. And uh, we turn this uh, potential on P wave resonance. So as usual that uh, we solve, uh, first solve the wave function describing the motion of the, we think of the fast moving light particle. So the this wave function phi is subject to uh, this uh, Schrodinger equation, right? So it, this light particle can s see the potential due to the two heavy particles uh, uh, who are set apart at the dif uh, distance uh, row. So the distance between these two particle, heavy particles uh, uh, is a row. And uh, this uh, eigen energy Kappa square uh, minus kappa square divided by 2n uh, is a function of a row. And uh, this eigen energy will serve as a uh, effective potential uh, in the equation determining the relative motion between these uh, two heavy just uh, particles. Then to solve this uh, uh, Schrodinger equation, so we adopt uh, uh, the following ansatz. So this ansatz has uh, basically two parts. So the left, uh, uh, sorry, the first term so it describes uh, the uh, a bound state wave function, just uh, uh, centering around the the right, just a heavy particle, right. Now in this case, because uh, we are talking about uh, P wave, so th there are two components. The light particle can rotate around the heavy one either clockwise or counterclockwise. And uh, so sim similarly is the second term. So we have uh, just the two bound, uh, two body bound state wave function and uh, we add them together. And uh, yeah. Is that a solution? It, it, it's uh, on that. So if, uh, ne next we are going to determine the value of these a, a's and the b's, the variables, and the, uh, and the most importantly, the value of this uh, kappa, right? This is that I plug it in this on the, apparently this on that satisfy this uh, equation. Okay. Yeah. Then, yeah. I should say, so the same approach has been used uh, in the, the, this uh, very wonderful review paper for the FM of states. Oh, yes, uh, you're right. So this is the wave function basically outside, yeah, outside the range of the, 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 the potential. Yeah. So the next thing one needs to do is to match the 
say the outside the wave function just uh, with the wave function inside uh, these uh, just uh, potentials, uh, inside the range of these uh, potentials. But uh, equivalently, what you can do is that uh, you can match with uh, asymptotic value in the sense that uh, when the light particle is very close to uh, one of these two heavy particles, uh, say, uh, in, in the sense that uh, at the separation, just S is very small compared to over, one over kappa. Kappa is the, the, the low just the energy scale in this problem. R0 is uh, the range of the potential. Then we know that uh, th this wave function must uh, acquire the following just uh, asymptotic, asymptotic form, right? Just uh, the re uh, regular pl uh, part plus a singular part. He, uh, the coefficient is uh, the usual uh, phase shift cotangent delta. The only difference is that uh, in this case, uh, we need to, because we are looking at uh, just the, the bound state whose energy is negative, then we, only, uh, we need to do an analytic continuation just uh, uh, from k to i kappa. So we need, then in, in this, after this uh, process, then you find uh, this cotangent delta is uh, equal to uh, this one over kappa square a square. Th this is the leading term, and uh, the next term gives you the, uh, involves uh, the effector range. Would a square be negative? No. You always have bound state. When once it's uh, I mean, near the period resonance, if it's slightly above resonance or slightly below resonance, I was imagining that the scaling area is squared. Either positive or negative. Uh, sorry. You, I think. Uh, yeah, you're right, you're right, sorry. The, the, so this way to put it is a little bit misleading. Yeah, if I expand, uh, uh, yeah, so you're right. It can be purely imaginary. <laughs> yeah, if you want to uh, make uh, the, the first term negative, in some sense, yeah. Uh, but at the unitarity, so the first term is gone, then we simply have this second term. So if we do the, it's just remember that we use uh, this wave function, which is valid outside the range of potential, and uh, do the expansion in terms of this uh, sm small s, then we match it with this uh, asymptotic form. Then this is the form we got for the wave function, and uh, this is the, the energy we got uh, for kappa square. So we see uh, there is a just a one, all, one over log factor here. So if we continue from here, and uh, we know that uh, so, so the two heavy particles are fermions, so we require just the uh, all the parity when so we uh, flip the sign over uh, th this row. And uh, if we look at this wave function, actually it uh, already has this order parity, so that. Uh, uh, for the relative motion between the two heavy ones, so we only require, uh, we require it to satisfy the even parity. So in the lowest order, then we can simply keep the S wave of uh, th this function f. So if we plug uh, this uh, kappa square into the equation for this uh, f, which describes the relative motion between the two heavy particles, then we obtain uh, this uh, final line. From this, then we can read off the attractor potential, which is this guy, it, it, whose strength uh, is uh, proportional to capital N over N, and uh, it has this interesting uh, just uh, log downstairs. Then from this potential, but uh, you see that uh, it's a little bit different from our expectation for the super f morph. Super f morph is a uh, log square. In this uh, ball 
Oppenheimer approximation calculation, the effective potential is a, a single log. Sorry, you're not doing fermions now? I'm doing fermions, two heavy fermions and uh, one light particle. And why is there an S wave for the two heavy fermions? Why there is no S wave? Well, why is there an S wave? Because the light is one. The light is one. No, no, but he said he was only going to keep the lowest order S wave for the two motion of the two heavy particles, or did I misunderstand? But there's a the factor in the full wave function. The, the overall, so the overall wave function should satisfy this uh, permutation, right, condition. But if you lo look at this uh, wave function, it already, the, 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 this part, it already ha has uh, this property. Otherwise, uh, you, you can say that, uh, um, you can imagine that if I simply multiply this wave function by a row, but it's not probably a good way. Just uh, say the angle of a row, things like that, right? Okay. Then, then you can, you, then you can change the uh, parity of this uh, rat, uh, this uh, phi to make it even, and then you require f to be odd. But uh, overall, th this is overall permutation requirement when these two satisfy, right? Rho is the coordinate between the two heavy identical fermions in the same spin state. Yes. They, that should have no two body states. That are I also has this rho dependence, right? That I depends on rho and R. So yeah. Fully separated. But the other state that, that, that was Girada state, you know, the light particle in the symmetric state, you say that the energy is. Above, right? So the, the energy is this one, yeah. No, no. Huh? This is for this uh, kind of anti-symmetric state of the light atom. But there should also be a symmetric one. Oh, you mean a minus sign here? Uh, yeah, the, 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 there's a one, just uh, say, no? yeah, say this is a minus sign. You, you, if you change this one to be a minus sign, then you find that uh, the energy you get uh, is um, of the order 1 over r effective. So it's a high energy solution. I'm talking about cosine, cosine, and minus sine. Cosine, cosine, OK. Uh, Is it? No, there's no kind, such kind of a solution. Because uh, no, because uh, uh, if you use this on that, right, just uh, uh, say you expand around, the, say, the left one, then you have uh, the clock rotating and the end clock rotating. Right, but these two parts should be just uh, symmetric in, in, in the sense that, uh, uh, in, in the sense that uh, the ratio between, just so you can imagine that, that there is an exponential i theta or exponential minus i theta, right? Then the ratio between the regular term and the uh, irregular term should be the same. Then you will immediately get the result that uh, uh, a1 plus a2 is 0, b1 plus b2 is 0. Yeah, the, the leftover with, with just the sign. Okay. So if one has this effective potential, uh, then one can also calculate uh, the binding energy just uh, for the bound states. Then in this case, so if the effective potential is uh, has only one single log downstairs then for shallow bound states whose energy would, the, 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 the binding energy would acquire this form. So it, it, the, the, this can be just, uh, up, this relation can be obtained by WKB analysis. If we do it numerically, so it's this line. Yeah, but on the other side, uh, say, uh, as we expected that uh, if the effect potential has a, log square downstairs, then WKB approximation will give you uh, the one predicted by the Nishida paper. And uh, the numerical calculation is uh, this uh, black line. Yeah. So. Yeah, numerically just uh, meaning that I solve this 
this one. No, not uh, the full, just the uh, cal calculation. Yeah. So what's the conclusion we can make at this point? So it seems that the, this more ap approximation analysis uh, didn't give the one we expected for super FMOF. And uh, apparently, in this limit, uh, it shows no super FMOF. Then the conclusion, if this ball approximation is right, then maybe that uh, so the big mass ratio limit is in a different universal class as the equal mass cases. If this is true, then that means that once the mass ratio is tuned, there, there can be a transition from the super FMOF to the non super FMOF. But uh, even for this non super FMOF, uh, these bound states uh, whose energy will have this uh, form, then I will say it's uh, equally interesting. Is it possible to have a, for the same mass ratio, you have a transition? Like in the, for certain energy range, you have this behavior, and for another energy range, you have the super FMR line. Presumably, this whole calculation is uh, true only when rho is very big, right? Just uh, rho is very big. Then uh, apparently this term compared to this super FMOF, uh, this one log is uh, leading, right? Yes. Yeah. So for for the for this whole pro for this ball <coughs> approximation analysis, so th this one is the leading term, right? But the, yeah, just uh, once uh, one log, one just uh, a single log term is there, then the, this, this square just is subleading, right? Okay. So now let's look at the, the equal mass case. So in this case, then we have a uh, three. Uh, one question about sure. the previous slides. So you mm. haven't gone beyond the one Oppenheimer approximation and looked at the corrections. N not yet. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Maybe the very large mass issue is the corruption. Is it suppressed? Uh, what is suppressed? The very large mass issue, maybe the corruption is suppressed. It's a natural expectation, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so. There is a case I might mention in, in three particle, three fermions in three dimensions, where if you did not include the, no, the diagonal non event correction, it would appear as though there is an FMOF effect. And it goes away when you include that. It, it kills the uh, attractive one over R squared. So it's pretty important to check that here. You mean the diagonal correction? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Born up and in yeah. Radius, in this case, actually, I've done a calculation to uh, for for the diagonal correction, and I find that uh, uh, the <laughs> diagonal correction. Uh, oh, you have calculated that. Yeah, I, but I, I I have it on my notes, but no, <laughs> not here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in this case, in the, in, in this uh, process, yes, it's uh, proportional to this <coughs> mass ratio. Okay, so now let's move to the equal mass case. So I have uh, three identical fermions that I would like to treat them equally. So I use a uh, hyperspherical formula. Then. Uh, then in this case, uh, so I have uh, three. Fermions. Basically, if you separate out uh, the center of a mass motion of the system, then the configuration, because it's in 3D, right? The configuration can be determined uh, in terms of uh, this uh, super radius, so which is uh, defined here. So this super radius basically tell you overall how close uh, these uh, three particles are, right? Just if rho is very small, that means uh, th three of them all stay very close to each other. And uh, 
we also need another three uh, angle. <laughs> this is the hyper angles, just three angles. So you can imagine that uh, we have uh, two uh, of these angles which determine the, the, just the, the shape of this triangle. And uh, we need another, uh, the third one, to determine the orientation of this triangle in the two-dimensional plane. Yeah. So for a detailed review of this uh, hyperspherical formulas, I'd like to refer to uh, this paper. So basically, we learned this formulas from this paper. <laughs> Angular momentum of the state. You, you mean this one or? The total, yeah. So if you would say it, it's, it's not an eigenvalue of the angular momentum, the, the core. Because the super equinox space should have L equals 1 plus minus 1 total. So what happens to it? Uh, you are right. Uh, first, I only check the. Uh, the parity of this uh, uh, function phi. But uh, presumably, I think uh, it's not a, well, it's not an argument. Can one say that this light one is in the superposition plus minus one, and the heavy one in S state? So that basically, it's a mixture of L plus one and minus one. So it's, it's it a must be degenerate. It's not an eigenstate, but it's an equal superposition. Yeah, it's not an eigenstate. I, I think it's not an eigenstate. Mm -hmm. So my question was, so it's yeah, a yeah, so superposition of L plus mm -hmm, one. Mm -hmm, plus mm -hmm, plus yeah. Plus Although I do not know. Is it a in, ter in terms of this, this, this wave function, so uh, th this wave function, yeah. If, uh, so you expand, you expand uh, uh, just uh, in terms of the angle of this uh, variable rho, right? Uh, then the overall, okay. The overall, but overall, I need to calculate uh, the, the 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 angular moment of this total wave function, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so uh, I have to say, yeah, I have to admit I have, haven't done this, so it's not clear. Just uh, yeah, but, but it, it's possible that it's a kind of a superposition. Okay. Then, but, but basically, in this uh, hyperspherical formula, so. When, identif when, uh, when identifies uh, the super angles as the fast uh, uh, just uh, varying variables and, uh, and the hyper radius as the slow one, so uh, when expands uh, the total wave function in terms of uh, the eigen wave functions, uh, this uh, uh, phi n, these uh, phi n, so diagonalize uh, the the grand angular momentum part plus the uh, pair of eyes, just the interaction potential part. Right, so you just expand the, uh, the total wave function in, uh, in this way, then you require uh, this uh, phi to be the eigen function uh, of the, yeah, th this part of the Hamiltonian. Then you go back to the w original shooting of equation, then you obtain the equation for the, uh, the, this f. So basic, basically for, yeah, so this lambda, so is the eigenvalue when we diagonalize uh, the, the uh, angular momentum and the potential part. And uh, there are more couplings which uh, are these are P's and the Q's. So if N is equal to N prime, so these are di diagonal terms, but uh, they are, are also just uh, off diagonal terms, right? The definition are given here. Then usually the, 
some insight can be extracted out from this uh, formalism when these P and Qs can be neglected, right? Then you, you go back. Uh, if P and Qs can be neglected, then we only have the left part, the left side of this equation. Then we can identify, associate the eigenvalue of this uh, lambda with some effector potential and uh, see how it uh, uh, changes uh, uh, with the row and uh, get maybe understand uh, what what's what, what kind of a bound state can the system hold. So if P and Qs are all neglected, uh, so we call it uh, adiabatic appro approximation. Then we got uh, this adiabatic potential, which depends on lambda. But if you add uh, the first uh, you add the diagonal, just correction. For diagonal terms, of P and N is zero because uh, uh, th th this phi N uh, is uh, normalized. Then if you add uh, this uh, Q and N, the diagonal correction, then you, we call this effective potential. Also, as I said, uh, sometimes maybe one needs to worry about the off-diagonal, just couplings. Then how to solve? Let's let's see. Yeah, for, first uh, let's see how to solve uh, this uh, angular part. So basically, you want to just uh, decompose uh, this Schrodinger uh, equation for the angular part into the so-called uh, Fadab equation. The idea is like this. So. Uh, just uh, look at the domain of this uh, angular momentum, uh, uh, sorry, the, the hi hyper angle angles, capital omega. So these uh, three regions are the places uh, where, uh, just imagine two uh, particles get so close to each other that they are within the range of the p two body potential. But then there are this uh, our region. So to solve this equation, if uh, this, uh, these angles are in this outside region, so that means uh, these v, uh, the potential is not there, then we have uh, three solutions. Th th these uh, three solutions are just uh, uh, Jacobi polynomials, and uh, they, they are well known. So then we'll do the similar thing, right? We got uh, the solution outside uh, this potential range, then we need to match it with the wave function inside this uh, region. So basically, we have the wave function outside. We want to match the inside one at the boundary, at these uh, boundaries where the interparticle potential uh, becomes uh, non-zero when it's moving inside. So. This uh, inside the wave function captures uh, basically all the interaction information. And uh, then in the region that uh, rho is very big, then we can do the asymptotic expansion of uh, this inside the wave function, <laughs> the, the value at the boundary actually. Then we can do the asymptotic expansion. So the natural uh, small variable then will be the R0 over rho. This is a small variable. R rho, I remind you, is uh, the range of the potential. So if we do the calculation, then f because for the super of states, so we are interested in the states whose angular momentum is a 1. And if we only keep the leading order, from this uh, inside uh, wave function, then one would obtain that the lowest solution would be of this form. So we, ha we do have a log uh, square downstairs. So yeah, th th this result uh, has been shown in our just archive preprint and uh, uh, this preprint by our Danish colleagues. What does this uh, sign? Th this is similar. It means that uh, this is the 
uh, leading order. Just, uh, just say because we do asymptotic expansion. In small parameters? Yeah. In log yes. So higher orders are 1 over log cubed? Mm -hmm. log. Yeah, yeah. This is the leading order. Yeah. So now if we say that we only keep, uh, we will use the adiabatic ad ad potential, meaning that we neglect all the P and Q, sorry. OK, so from this log square, this form, then yeah, so we do get a, a supermorph, a super f-morph structure for the binding energies. The only difference is that, uh, so we get uh, this uh, scaling factor S0 is square root of uh, 16 over 9 minus 1 quarter compared to uh, this uh, square root of uh, 16 over 9 obtained by Nishida and uh, his colleagues. Yeah. So uh, just uh, let me remind you, this one minus one quarter, you, you can think of uh, it as the range of correction in the WKB just analysis. Yeah. But the thing that uh, actually in this case, it's, I should say, for, for 3D, just FMOF states, so uh, you only need to keep the leading order of this from from this uh, inside wave function, but uh, in this case, for two D P wave, actually, if you do it carefully, do the systematic asymptotic expansion, you find that actually you need to to keep it to the next leading order of uh, this uh, wave function. Then the solution totally ch changes. The lowest solution then becomes uh, of this form. It's proportional to a parameter y divided by a single logarithm function. And uh, this uh, parameter y is actually a new parameter. Uh, we got the, an expression for it. You see that it depends on the uh, two-body zero energy wave function and also the potential. So it's uh, shown in our preprint. And uh, let me emphasize that uh, this parameter y cannot be parameterized by a finite number of uh, parameters from the phase shift. The reason is that, uh, so you, you, you can see that uh, this y actually involves the, uh, because this is ad adiabatic uh, just potential, right, for fixed uh, row. So this y involves uh, the, correlated movement of the third particle. Just say so you have three particles, but you want to, them to stay on the uh, hypersphere of a radius row, right? So when two of them move very close to each other to interact, the third one must move correspondingly to keep a row fixed. So this movement uh, actually uh, is uh, encapsulated into this Y. That's why this Y cannot be rep parameterized by just the, the, uh, the parameters from the phase shift where only the relative motion between two particles uh, is involved. I yeah. think uh, the third part of wouldn't be willing to move in this current motion. <laughs> they are smaller than average. Yeah. So this is the physical meaning of this y. Yeah. The, then the, th the physics uh, you mentioned is uh, can come from the P and the Q's. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the corrections. <laughs> yeah. So later, it's uh, point, uh, pointed to us by Ivan and uh, the Danish colleagues that uh, so this Y can be expressed uh, in this way. So it, it, this, uh, then this expression is uh, much more manifest that uh, this Y must be positive. Right? Therefore, the, the adiabatic potential is attractive. Then, we, then you, you, one can calculate the y for different potentials at uh, just uh, different uh, p-wave uh, re resonances. Then we have uh, just a uh, square well, Gaussian, and uh, Hus, just hard core plus uh, just uh, the Van der Waals tail. Then you see that uh, the value of a y changes so when you change. Uh, it basically increases if you go to deeper just uh, resonances. Yeah. So. 
this is, uh, I should emphasize again, this is only within the uh, adiabatic just approximation. Yeah, the Q's and P's are neglected. Then what are the corrections? The corrections, uh, the first, uh, they come from the di uh, diagonal term. This P not naught is zero because uh, the, w the angular just a wave function is normalized, as I said before. Then it's shown by the, these Danish people uh, that uh, this Q not naught actually would has this uh, similar leading behavior. So now if you look at the effective potential, meaning you collect all the diagonal terms, you add uh, uh, the adiabatic one with this uh, diagonal correction, then you see that uh, this uh, one over log term should cancel, then that means uh, the leading order of the effective potential must uh, go like a one over log square. So that's uh, right, the, the, the leading term cancel, one over log term cancel, then that give you, then the leftover leading term for this effective potential must be one over log square. So it seems that we are getting close to the super ephemeral <laughs> states. Okay, was it the coefficient? Yes. <laughs> The, then, then the question: What's the uh, this coefficient c? The thing is that uh, you you can do you can calculate uh, this part, the adiabatic potential part, just uh, analytically, and you can expand. Right, this is uh, the leading term for this adiabatic potential. Then the next uh, term will have a coefficient coefficient also depend on the value of a y. Yeah. But uh, for this uh, correction term Q, actually we cannot do it uh, analytically. So we, we don't know. So it's possible that uh, you can imagine that uh, the, when we add these two terms together, then the resultant uh, uh, coefficient C may be close to 16 over 9, the number that uh, we are looking for. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but once uh, we start to worry about uh, the corrections. We have now we include the diagonal term. Then how about the off diagonal terms? So that's the place we have turned to numerical calculations. <laughs> so we have a uh, Dr. Wang joined our team, and uh, as I said, that he his PhD work is mainly doing just numerical calculation of a three body, just a problem. So it, it's a really his uh, expertise in this uh, problem. So I will show you some his preliminary results. So what he did that he, he used uh, Gaussian potentials just uh, for the two body uh, interaction. Then he can calculate, uh, uh, say, let's say this uh, correction, diagonal correction term Q not not, then he can fit this uh, Q not Q not not. He finds uh, this uh, leading behavior. Then, th then he can f I should say he finds uh, this leading behavior of Q not is a uh, one over log. Then he can fit the parameter C one and the R one. <coughs> and uh, then so his calculation is done up to say rho over R effective uh, about uh, uh, ten to cube ten cube. Then here is the depth. Just uh, you vary the depth of the Gaussian potential, make it deeper and deeper. So this is the sc scatter length. Then it's very big. In this case, it must be uh, a, a square. Just uh, it can be neg negative. Yeah, but uh, its magnitude is very big. So very close to the P wave resonance, and uh, so different resonance have a little bit different uh, effect range. Then this y is the theoretical just a value for just for this y, yes. Then by this fit, <coughs> then he can extract out uh, the value of a c1. So you can see that uh, the c1 he gets uh, so far is uh, quite close to the analytical result of this y. So 
it agrees with uh, what uh, our Danish colleagues have found. Right? And our bite fit is uh, not very close to, but the same, same order of I effective. Then next, he, what he does is that, uh, so he added the adiabatic part plus uh, uh, with the, this uh, diagonal correction. Then he finds that the leading behavior is one over log square. So to, then he can extract out uh, this coefficient C2. So C2 changes from about the two, two, from 2.0 to 1.8. So far, so yeah. So you see this trend, it's becoming smaller and smaller. As the scattering length gets larger and larger, or as, as the scattering length gets smaller. So you, you want A is infinity? Yeah, uh, ideally, yeah, I want A infinity. Yeah. Basically, they are different, uh, the, the different are just uh, resonances, right? The, the potential becomes deeper and deeper. But uh, this for this A, let me think, because it's R A squared. Yeah. Why didn't Numerically, you can do that. <laughs> okay. Numerically, you always have some deviation, right? You cannot make anything exact, exact. <laughs> Yeah, 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 of course, it's uh, what we want. But uh, first, I should say this is preliminary, so we are still working on just to uh, improve the precision, just to uh, make it better. So th this is uh, definitely the one thing that uh, we will do, just um, yeah, keep uh, a big. <laughs> Yeah, it depends on yeah, how, how precise you want, right? Just, uh, yeah. Then we extract out of this C2, then it's becoming smaller, and it, it, it kind of has this trend that it's uh, going too close to this uh, 16 over 9, which is about uh, 1.78. And the compare. You want A going to infinity, so you should be going up, and so 2.054 is closer to. I mean, A is closer to infinity on the top line, right? Yes. So you should compare 2.054 to, to the two predictions. If I use this one, yeah, th then this one is closer to you have an extra one quarter there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But should, I, should I be worried about the fact that R2 is not equal to RF? You mean R2 not equal to R effective? Mm -hmm. then, it then it will simply give you, if you, yeah, this R2. R2 is, a say, if you change R2 to R effective, then it will give you a correction to the next order term. Right? Just so you're saying it doesn't change the leading behavior. Yeah, the, the leading behavior is there. Sorry, are you sure that the uh, potential that Sun and Nishida derive, that that Hamiltonian in Rho did not have a first derivative term? Did they eliminate the first derivative term? Because that elimination is basically what gives the one, one quarter. Uh, actually, they didn't uh, show. They didn't show the. the, 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 the no. Yeah, the, the first derivative term will give you this uh, yeah, minus so we'll one quarter. No, but we did not use the hyperspheric. Yeah, you didn't put it in that frame, but it must be, it must somehow map onto onto this Hamiltonian. Yeah, 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 and so it maps to the Hamiltonian this extra one quarter. Oh, it does. Yeah, yeah. That, that's been worked out. So is there a short separable potential, a short range of potential? Yeah, it's a short range. So we have a short Gaussian. Separable potential. So it supports precisely one bound scale and you give it to the resonance. Okay. And wait, can you back up? Sure. So, when <coughs> you, so your, your case should, I mean, should he see you miscalculation if 
if it, if it was the same problem as yours, should he see 16 ninths or 16 ninths minus a quarter? So the, the result is what, what we do predict is, is that one, 16 over 9 minus a quarter. So which, which translates in the potential to 16 over 9 plus, plus one quarter. Yeah, plus one quarter. So if we want to match with their prediction, then there, there should be a, an extra plus one quarter here. So there is a one gap correction which operates that. So the numerical calculation results you were shown are, cons it's in are consistent with uh, for the biggest. <laughs> the, the, this one is uh, closer to there's one quarter. Can you tune the other scattering lengths also to, you know, to make it really higher? So we have M it's make it this yeah. bigger. Yeah, such yeah. that it's really comparable. Yeah, yeah, sure. We're we are, we are doing okay. this. Yeah, we're trying to do this. Yes. So these differ by having deeper and deeper potentials, so more and more bound states. Yes. So actually, it's the top one that has a single bound state that's closest to what they have. Yeah. Okay, okay, if you say because they use a separable potential which can only hold at most of one bound state, in that sense? Yes. Uh -huh. because the systematics in C2 look as if they're more following with the depth than with the accidentally not quite infinite values of A. Mm -hmm. How can you see it? <laughs> well, the depths are going down, whereas A... Going up? The magnitude... Oh, sorry, it is consistent. Sorry, I, I was misreading those. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, that's not, yes, excuse mm -hmm. me, I was drawn that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's so far we got. Uh, so I, I shall say, uh, at least on our part, uh, we think that the story is not concluded. So uh, anyhow, I should uh, just uh, end my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any more questions or comments? question is why in the Bornheimer we get one of the logarithm and you know for equal masses we have one of the logarithm square. Mm -hmm. Where is this power? The you know? <laughs> to change just that. Then m maybe one thing that in, even in the Bornheimer approximation then how about those off <coughs> diagonal just a coupling. Okay. This is uh -huh. Because you know this off diagonal thing. Sorry, diagonals. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, whatever is there, you know, with this P and Q, mm -hmm. it, it comes with one over m capital. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Which means that in principle, in the limit, when m is very large, m capital is very large. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, you cannot get the power of logarithm from there. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, yeah, you're right. Um, OK, so my question is that did you try different <coughs> masses and just connect these two regions? Uh, so try different, you mean numerically? Yes, well, like too heavy one wide, but. Yeah, uh, that, that's, uh, that's what we are going to do next, of course, just uh, numerically and see how the trend changes. But, uh, uh, but uh, Sergei Sir has, uh, they have done some uh, calculation, right? Extend uh, their previous calculation for unequal mass cases then they, they still find a super FMOF states. Then one thing maybe, it, it involves uh, this, uh, uh, j j I don't know how to say it, maybe just the asymptotic expansion. You can imagine <coughs> that, uh, so in this case, so you first uh, expand to the leading order of this mass ratio, right? Then you expand it to large row. But if you, s but do the different order, right? So can it make difference? I don't know. Yeah, but it's worth a further numerical just uh, investigation. I, mean, I still think I, I would propose doing the born Oppenheimer differently than you're doing it, mm -hmm. not assuming S wave for the two heavy fermions. Why not assume that's P wave and just treat the Jacobi distance from their center of mass, only the distance, not the actual vector, mm -hmm. adiabatically, mm -hmm. and include all the proper symmetries in and by making that a P wave, I think that'll change some details and it might fix this. Mm -hmm. P wave doesn't bind, so that's what we said. There is no uh, like 
symmetric state for the light atom. How can you satisfy the you So you're saying you would need an unbound state of your P wave. But I mean that's the actual part of the Hilbert space has has it to have a node somewhere. Yeah, I understand uh, your point. Just uh, you, you want to do boron appro approximation just more carefully, right? Uh, then uh, in my mind, so just a numerically for numerical calculation, probably I can do such kind of thing easily. But uh, so far, I don't know how to do it analytically. I see. Just uh, I see. yeah. yeah. Uh, so when the mass ratio is equal to one, there are two different uh, physical situations. Either you have uh, two pairs of uh, resonance interactions, or you can have uh, three pairs of uh, resonance interactions. I wonder if you get a similar or very different structure for these two different cases. Uh, uh, it's <coughs> possible, but uh, in our just uh, analytical calculation, so we, uh, let me think, we should still, yeah, get similar result. I think, it just, just uh, turn off the interaction between two of them. Right. I think so, yeah. But uh, your point is simply say that because in the bone Heimer approximation, uh, so because the, 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 the two heavy ones are set uh, very far apart, right? So whether they are P wave resonantly interacting or not, uh, it seems in that formula is not, doesn't, show, doesn't show, show up, right? So that may also make a difference just uh, compared to you have uh, three particles all just uh, resonantly interacting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we did, we did this calculation for different classes. Okay. So this are here with this two metrics. Mm -hmm. So for the case you are talking about, so you know, there everything is equal masses, but particles are distinguishable, for example, mm -hmm. right? We got the super atom effect with not four over three, but two over three. And two over three. Two mm -hmm. over three, okay. In S0? S0, yeah. So and if you increase the mass ratio, oh, the effects too. Four over three, four, three pairwise interactions, and the two or three for two pairwise interactions? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, yeah. So when, when, the, when the two four do not interact, uh, okay. only two pairwise. Did, did you get a super atom of interaction in both cases? In both cases, yeah. yeah. Thanks. And also with, for different masses, we also got a greater effect actually for even when the masses are very to have one light still seems that there is a super effect from the calculation symmetrics of the normalization group. Uh, in a two-level one, I think. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's thank uh, Chinua again. <laughs> There's more time for discussion at 3.30 in the afternoon in the fishbowl. I mentioned the people coming to the workshop now.